Hi everyone, today I'm going to be colouring in this lovely little ticket from um, Johanna Basford's Worlds of Wonder and I'm going to be using this very limited selection of pencils. I've been asked to do just a small selection of polychromos to show you some techniques that you can use if you don't have the big set. Obviously I have the 120 set if you've seen any other of my videos you'll know and I use a big range of colours but here I'm limited. What I've decided is to pick the 12 that are from the 12 tin of polychromos. Now if you have the 24 tin, the 36, the 60 or the 120, all of these will be included. What polychromos do is the 12 tin has 12, the 24 has those 12 plus an additional 12 and the 36 has all those in the 24 plus an additional 12. So everyone who's got a tin of polychromos will have these colors so we've got a white we've got the um we've got the cadmium yellow the um sorry i'm turning them around to see what they are the dark cadmium orange the deep scarlet red or scarlet red i'm not sure it's 219 i can't remember it's the deep scarlet red we've got the magenta the light ultramarine the phthalo blue emerald green light green, brown ochre, walnut and black. So let's just move all of these away to the side. So I'm going to start with the hearts. Now normally I would just grab a light pink but obviously I can't so I'm going to start with the red and I'm going to try to blend it with the white and see if I can get a pinky colour. Now I don't want the heart to be the same colour through the whole heart so I'm doing it darker at the bottom here with more layers of red and lightening it up towards the top of the heart. And I'm going to do two of the hearts in this red, so this one as well. And then the other two I'm going to do in the magenta. And then we'll have a look and see which makes the nicest pink colour when we add white. Now the polychromos white isn't brilliant. Um, it's not as good a blending as like the Prismacolor or Caran d'Ache or anything like that. So here's the magenta, I'm gonna do these two. Um, I could start darker at the bottom. I'm gonna do, do this similar so it's gonna be dark on the pointy bit. So um, we'll see if it works. If it doesn't work very well, I may have to cheat and use a white from a different set, which I have got on hand. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully it'll work, but uh, that's that one and then this one I thought will be um, a challenge this is a challenge for me as well it's a long time since I only had a limited set of colors and I had to sort of make my own so I've got the white now and I'm just going to go over the top I'm going to start on the lighter area first and it is it's definitely having an effect it might be difficult for you to see because you're not so um, zoomed in it's sort of blending and blurring, but it's not really making it look particularly pink. But I think if I keep applying more layers, it def if you can definitely see a bit of a difference between this one and this one, but it still looks red to me rather than pink. Let's see how we go with this one. Now, when you're going from colour to colour, do you need to be a bit careful? I wasn't. That there might be some colour build up from the previous colour on the tip of the pencil. And uh, you might want to rub that off on a piece of paper. I um, I can show you. Um, there's a bit of the magenta. It's hard, hard to see actually. I'm going to move to the other magenta one and then clean off that tip before doing the red one. Because this is a stronger colour, I think. I don't want my red going magenta recolor. I just scribble on a piece of paper to my right hand side. So there we are. It has faded down and blended it a little bit but it hasn't made it really really pink. This one seems lighter than this one and I think it's because there's less layers of red. I probably overdid it with the red on this one but what I am going to show you is I've got my Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil and um, if I try that I think it will have much more of a fading impact on the red make it look much pinker mm, I think 
I can see a bigger difference with that. Now, a, a Prismacolor white will probably be better too. Polychromos white isn't brilliant. Right, we're going to go with our flowers. I'm going to do the centres. Now, I don't want them just plain yellow. I am going to go for a yellow centre, but so I'm going to put a little bit of the orange in it to blend it into a darker yellow at the bottom. Now I'm doing a really gentle layer, can you hardly see it. I'm basically touching the pencil to the paper as lightly as I can and just massaging it there. And there's the faintest bit of orange, that's all I want. And then with my yellow, I can go over with more, with a heavier amount. And then that orange shows through. It is hard using a light hand and I'm going back to put a bit more orange on this one but go away yellow um, but you can practice what I would do is get a scrap of paper and try going as gently as you can putting the lightest layer it's just about pressing really not very hard now flowers, because we're, I'm going because I've done pink here, I'm gonna do blue and we've got two blues, they're different shades, so I'm gonna do a darker bit in the middle and then the lighter bit on the outside. So all of the flower middles I will start off with quite a thick dark layer and then scumble it out so see this little circular movement until it fades out quite a lot and do the same on every single petal. It's going to be a little bit repetitive because we can't do them all different colours but hopefully um, it will help you see what I'm doing and if it's... I stop here and I have a look that there doesn't look dark enough in the centre compared to these two so I can just put a little bit more, a few more layers on but they are light layers. It's about having patience, not rushing. If you're in a rush to finish, you want to push hard so that you can get colour down and get on. But for me, colouring should be a um, relaxing um, pastime. It shouldn't be a race. I have got a problem with this new book in that every picture is a delight and I just want to colour them all at once. So I feel like I'm in a rush to finish everything because I want to move on to the next one but I have to slow myself down and remind myself that, you know, the pictures are going to be there for me to do whenever I'm ready and I don't have to hurry and finish them all really quickly. And actually I'll get more enjoyment for longer if I spend a bit longer on each picture. But anyway, it's lovely to have such a nice book. Now I'm looking again and these are darker in the centre than this one. So I'm going to darken it a bit more here and just blend that out so that I haven't got a, just a dark stripe. Definitely this one's too light. You see, it's a matter of, this is the sort of thing that you might rush if you're in a hurry, not stopping to just have a look before you switch to the next colour. You can, of course, do it later. You don't have to, you can look once you've added the second colour. There we go. Oh, someone's making a very drilly type noise outside. I doubt you can hear it. And here's our lighter. This is the Up Light Ultramarine. So I haven't really been telling you the colours because I told you them at the beginning. But they'll be in my description at the bottom. So you'll be able to grab all of them before you get started. And uh, have them all on hand. You can, or you can uh, just pause now and grab them all out. Whatever, if you're colouring along right now. Now you notice I'm not taking the colour right to the tip of the leaves, the petals. Um, I don't think that's always necessary. It depends what um, effect you're going for. I just want it to gently fade right out. So what I'm doing is I'm not starting right in the middle where the dark blue is. I'm starting where the blue fades and going over the top of that and then doing a lighter amount here. So what you could do is take it light right away and then build the layers up near to where the darker colour is so that it blends in. I've got a bit too much here, you can't, won't really see the lighter colour. 
I'm doing the same thing on each of these. We're going to do a similar technique with the um, leaves so you can have another go. I'm quite excited today, I've been busy setting up a website. Um, what I've decided to do, I've grabbed my two greens, we've got the light green and the emerald green. I'm going to start with the emerald green. I'm going to do a very similar thing to what I did with the flowers. So take a darker colour here and then fade it out towards the tip. So I started up a website um, I thought would be useful. Um, what I've done is there were some step-by-step -step written tutorials with photographs. So I know some people aren't so keen on videos and following along they find it a little bit fast or a little bit tricky. So I've tried a few of those and I will be adding to them. There's only two on there at the minute but obviously it takes me time to uh, make them and also get you a video every day and I've got other work on at the minute which is uh, slowing me down but I aim to get lots of content on there for you. There are book reviews on there at the moment and a few other bits and bobs and um, there's a sign up to my newsletter. So the website is simple, it's um, Rachel Henderson Colouring with a U because I'm from the UK so rachelhendersoncolouring.co.uk so remember to pop that U in and you'll find me. Um, there is a link in the description to this video anyway. So if you're interested, you can go and have a little peep. And um, there's actually, I've added a link now to all of my um, social media channels. Now, I have quite a lot of Facebook requests from people who don't have a colouring Facebook page. Um, we're going in with the light green and what we're going to do is the same as this so I'll re-explain it so not going right back to the edge just where we start to fade the green starting it there and gently doing a small circular motion and taking it towards the tip possibly leaving the tip blank oops I just broke the end okay so um, I have had a get quite a lot of Facebook friend requests from people who are in um, the Facebook colouring groups with me. Um, Johanna Basford, your pages is the one that's I, that I do most in. But I don't, my Facebook account is a personal one just for family and people that I've met in person. I never put colouring on there. So I don't befriend people through Facebook like that. Because it's, uh, it's a waste of time. They won't see anything exciting. I have rarely post on Facebook, apart from in within the colouring group. Um, but um, I have an Instagram page. I have, I'm on Reddit and Pinterest. Um, so I shared all of those, depending on, so you can see, depending on which social media groups you're in. Um, I am most active in Instagram with regards to posting completed pictures as well as um, links to my videos. Now we've got this turned over leaf. I'm thinking about what to do with this because I want it to be a slightly different shade of green and we've used both our greens. So what I'm going to do is I've got brown. Hmm. No, maybe not the brown. Um, I think I'm going to use a white. I'm going to use my white first on here quite gently don't burnish it hard into the page and then I'm going to put the green very gently on top Whoops! and I'm hoping that it will be a slightly lighter shade of green it is I'm going to have to press a bit harder to get a bit more green on there there we go that's 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 good that's what I wanted now we've got a lot more little bits and details to do I've got to think about excuse me what we're going to do with the background and the side of the ticket and this sort of bordery bit and these dots. I think these dots I'm going to do in red. Okay, so I'm going to grab this red. Oh, and I'm going to miss entirely. There we go. Now the swirly bits, I'd quite like to be a goldy type colour and that is going to be a challenge with this limited colour palette. But I think might be daring and have a little go and see what happens. So I'm taking the brown, this is the walnut brown remember, and starting here putting down some brown and for these I'm going to put it into the little cornery parts and I'm just fading it so I put quite a hard layer here and then fading it out 
and they're going to do the same on the other side obviously it's um, a mirror image now even though we've got a limited color palette here I don't want to extend this dark brown too far I'm going to do a bit here as well we'll have to extend the other colors a bit further than we normally would because we don't have enough to graduate that gold but if I take the brown too far it will just look dark and that isn't what I want but we'll use the lighter brown more I think I'm going to put a little bit on the corner here as well because we've got limited color I think it will work better so you can whoops oh well you can see I've sort of trying to fade it out a little bit and a bit darker here so now I'm going to take this this little tiny baby this is our brown ochre and I'm going to go over the top of this darker brown do quite a hardish layer here and then fade it along here hopefully you can see that that's fading along do the same over here and with these little bits now normally with a gold after I've done a couple of browns I would then go on and do the brownie yellows like ooh that's too far I've made a mistake hold on don't copy that I'm going to use my Tombow eraser to take that back because we need some gap there I'd forgotten about us having done that corner <laughs> I'm sorry if you did that wrong so take that up just a bit because we've got the quite a small space here but this one we need to take across further normally I would go in with the brownie yellow so like a Naples yellow or a sort of ochre something like that but we don't have that so I've got to think about where I'm going next with my colour I could go straight in with my yellow but I'm not sure whether that's going to work because it's quite a it's quite a vibrantly bright yellow so I'm thinking should we try a bit of orange a really tiny bit oh my yellow wants to roll all over my book so what I'm going to do now this is gentle very light just the smallest bit I'm hoping when we go over with the yellow it will help that to blend that's a bit dark there it will help that to blend into the um, yellow a really tiny bit here and here because we haven't got much space okay now we're going to go in with the yellow this is the um, cadmium yellow of course now I'm going to go over the whole thing in yellow but leave a tiny white gap in the centre so that it gives the impression that it's shiny I hope that shows up there we go now it's a bit more difficult with this because I'm going to take it right to the end so I think it will look uncoloured it's easier if you'll bring it together in a sort of on a line there we go and this one I'm pressing quite hard with this yellow because it's our final layer it's quite hard to get much showing in this one I think I did too much brown really that there the transition there is a bit too um, a bit too sharp should we say I'm not sure not there we go so there we are I think that's come out fairly well considering our limited color palette and now we've got the background to do and I'm thinking I want something quite light now what I'm considering is doing a blue background behind the hearts and a pink background behind the flowers or a red background behind the flowers but something quite gentle and light so I'm going to go for my ultramarine and I'm going to hold it on its side and just gently tickle the paper to just get the lightest lightest layer can you see I'm holding it at the end I could probably hold it a little bit closer but I don't want to hold it too close to the end because I think that encourages me to push down on these dots I'm just going to go over the top they're so small you won't notice and the joy with doing the um, 
background last as you can slightly overlap the lines it doesn't matter because we've burnished these hearts in with them um, our white pencil it won't really the blue won't really sit on there we do need to be careful with our background though particularly this it's not a background but the that so there's that blue I'm really going to leave it at that gentle level and this now I can either do magenta or red now the red's a bit lighter so I'm going to go for the red I'm going to use the same technique as you see on its side now this is going to be a bit darker so I'm going to have to be careful and I haven't burnished the colors on this one so I need to try and stay in the lines as you can see my pencils are really sharp which helps me stay in the lines well a little bit as you know I'm not brilliant at staying in the lines but we can pop in this light and you see with a limited color palette this is the sort of technique that we need to sort of learn to use because if we have if I didn't um, if I wasn't limiting myself I could just use a light pink or a lighter red something like that now what I would really like to do for the outside of the ticket is grey, but I don't have one, so I've got to have a think. I've got black, we haven't used the black, and I'm going to use it just a little bit to show you how we could use it for some shading, but I'm not going to use it for the outside. I feel that just around the edge and the bottom of the flower middles, we can use it to create some shade shadow so it makes them look slightly more three-dimensional we can do it here on the edges of the leaves so we can use the black a fair bit really we can it's quite um, good going over the top just over the top of the black lines that Johanna's drawn in the areas where you want it to look like their shadow and it just gives a slightly more three-dimensional look you do need to be careful because it's black once you've made a mistake you can't get rid of it but I think feel that's made a little bit of a difference we could also use it here just to darken up that a little bit and I notice I've missed off the yellow there So the outside, I'm still pondering. So we could use, we've used blue, we've used red, we could use the magenta, that's an idea. We could use the browns, but then they might get lost. I've gone out of the lines here, which I'm just gonna erase. We also need to think about um, whether we're gonna just do a solid color or a gentle color or do some shading within the color. So, I'm just thinking whether I am going to use this colour or should I use green? Oh, it's such a difficult choice, isn't it? I'm going to use green. I'm going to go for this emerald green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar approach to what Johanna did when she did these. I don't know if you watched her lives where she was colouring the tickets. So I'm going to use still light. You see, I've got it on its side. I'm going to fade it here so it's a bit darker in the corner but not mega dark and fade it towards the centre both sides and do the same up here so while I'm doing this I'll go back to about my website I've also got a newsletter which you can sign up for and what I'm going to be doing is sending out only once a fortnight or less often depending on what I've been doing and it will just let you know what I've been doing it might show you some of the pictures I've been colouring and um, um, it might tell you about new videos I've made new tutorials that I might have put up on the website or reviews or anything like that and uh, just some just bits and bobs really what I've been up to really so I just thought it might be interesting I've had a few people sign up already which is really lovely thank you very much and uh, as I say I won't um, bombard you and you can unsubscribe at any time I don't want you feeling ugh not another email <laughs> you know so I've used the same technique here and gently faded and I'm going to do the same here so this page is quite bendy so I'm going to hold it down here 
just with my fingers so that I can try and get the effect. I find if the page is curved it can be quite difficult to colour on but I've actually pushed my pages down a little bit which is really naughty to try and flatten them out to make it a bit easier. Now yesterday um, yesterday this video won't go out on the right day but um, Johanna was in her live talking about how you should never try and push your spine down because it breaks the book. I realise it's a risk. I t decided to take that risk but you need to be very careful particularly if you've got this is the UK binding which has got sewing and gluing so it's quite sturdy but the US binding I know they tend to fall apart a bit. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gently going over a little bit more to try and emphasise these darker corners to make them look a little bit darker and then fading it towards the middle. I might not do all the tickets on this page using the same method. I quite like that emerald green colour. You could do it darker if you wanted but I know I've been, I have been asked to show how to do a light touch so I hope this is helping you to see how I'm doing it that I'm just building up really light gentle layers using the pencil on its side going slowly and uh, generally sorry about that noise it's the boiler coming on and just generally layering up the colour gently now I had left a white gap in the middle but I'm not I'm going to add colour to it all the way through because it wouldn't be shiny white gaps try to tend to to me indicate shine. I do, tickets are usually paper. Um, in my experience they're quite thick rough paper. If you think of an old-fashioned cloakroom ticket if you're in the UK you may not know what that means elsewhere <sighs> like a raffle ticket or something too. There I'm gonna leave that there. I'm quite happy with that. So I hope that was useful, talking about how you can use just a limited colour palette and get a fairly good result. I'm pretty pleased with that gold, considering how um, how few colours we used. And uh, you could obviously do all sorts of other combinations at all as well. Obviously, we did cheat with the white. That's the only thing, using this, uh, not really finding this one particularly good so that's the only thing but um, you could probably manage without whitening that down too much or you could potentially add more layers and it might work better but there we go um, I hope you enjoyed that I hope it was useful thank you so much for watching and happy coloring